This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgan, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we're going to have a fun one tonight. Uh, the newbies are in studio from the International Wrestling Cartel in part one of our uh, hopefully two-part series of this because so many came out of the class this year. But we'll get into that in a moment. In the meantime, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and hit us up at GoodTimesAtWrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Let us know any thoughts you have on anybody coming up, any questions for anybody we have scheduled that you can see over on the IndieWrestling.us and Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook pages uh, to see who is coming up and who we do have scheduled. They pop up here and there. Sometimes we get like two interviews in a night. Sometimes, who knows? And we'll get a panel and we are looking for suggestions. If there's anybody you think we should talk to, let us know. We definitely take those under consideration uh, when we are booking guests for this show. So, uh, and of course, please go check out everything over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, a lot of the people on the show, including our guests tonight, you can see their matches. Some of them, their first matches over there at IndieWrestling.us on video on demand uh, there in rental and purchase form uh, or maybe eventually over on the IndieWrestling.us network you can catch it guys like the uh, uh, no handshake selling Lee Moriarty as we're going to find out here in a little bit I'll throw him out there that's the second time this week by the way I've heard a story about his handshakes but anyways that's for another show on the network Uh, but we have two guests with us both just recently uh, within the past two weeks, completing their first official professional pro- the professional wrestling match. First of all, we'll just go down the couch. We have with us, he is the professor. <laughs> Elijah Dean. What? Well, wrong one. There yeah. you go. Oh, there we go. There, there you we go. go. Mislabeled. <sighs> For some reason, this is the one labeled Honey Badger. So, um... <laughs> it, that... One of the less common sex nicknames I've ever heard. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. no. I have a long and interesting <laughs> life. <laughs> the Professor Ryan Dye joining Thank us. Hello. Much. How you doing? Not bad. Thank you for having me. And also, as was partially previewed, he is, and we're going to ask him what this is entirely, because there's a lot of discussion on commentary about what a man dime is. What a man dime is. Yes. Means I'm the sexiest man out there. That's what the man That's dime right. is. That's uh, right. The man dime, Elijah Dean, joins us as well. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. So we like to warm things up, especially since you guys are a brand new to the wrestling ring. Uh, we like to uh, have a little icebreaker of uh, you know finding out what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling. Hmm. Uh, let's go. You want to take that one first? Right. Right. I think. Up to you. It's, you're the guy behind the desk. No. Oh, go ahead, Professor. Oh, okay then. I thought you guys were going to choose for me, so. Oh no, no, no. It's I mean, it, you know, I'll, I'll make decisions for you. I don't care. It's not my show. Um, right. it's not like this show has not been taken over before. All right, earliest memory of wrestling. So back in the day, I used to go to this thing called kindergarten, oh. and this was during the Attitude Era, where you Attitude know, Era kindergarten. Yeah, oh, Attitude boy. Era Jeez. kindergarten. Uh, you know, oh, down in the. Oh, this is the part of the show where I feel really old. Oh, yeah. you know, it's you know down in the deep dank hollers of West Virginia. Mm-hmm. You know, there are all these kids that were really into wrestling, and you know they have these skull T-shirts, and they're they're doing crotch chops. Wait, 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 wait. in kindergarten? Yeah. Okay. Listen, this is West Virginia. Parents don't care what their kids yeah, wear. Okay, that is true. That is true. Okay. Yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah. And uh, they're talking about. Oh, uh, you, you Goldberg, yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Meanwhile, I just saw like two bald guys. I don't know who they are. Yeah, but I. It was confusing in the nineties. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's. I have a hard time telling people apart anyway. So I just saw yeah. two bald guys, and they're both wrestlers. And you know, one guy wears a vest, and the other guy wears small pants. You know, they're they're to me they're hard to tell apart back at that young supple age. Anyway, supple. supple. <laughs> Listen, I've got adjectives. Okay, um, that's why he's the professor. Yes, I know words. Anyway, 
So because I wanted to be part of this cool kids club, I begged my dad for weeks. Dad, we have to watch wrestling so I can be cool. I want to see these totally realistic fights. And <laughs> my dad finally obliges. And, you know, okay, uh, this year, WCW Nitro. I honestly forget what show it was, but I think, I think it was WCW. It had a bald guy. And it didn't have a bald guy. It didn't have a bald guy. No. It cuts to, I'm sure someone's going to point out who it was. Mm -hmm. You know, some guy cutting a promo in the ring and like, oh my gosh, he's big and he's covered in chains and leather. You know, this seems like my kind of thing. Don't you judge me. Not yet. Anyway. (laughs) So suddenly from the rafters comes famous movie serial killer Chucky. And he starts cutting a promo on some guy in the ring because... Bride of Chucky was coming out, and there's this thing called cross promotion. And my dad got up off the couch, drunkenly stumbled his way to the TV, and turned it off, which was the first time I ever saw him do that. And he said, No, never again. And thus, the seeds were sown. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, so I should have went first. I'm that. <laughs> so, your earliest memory was disappointing my father, yes. Was it- <laughs> Uh, was he mad because it was Chucky or was he mad just because it was complete shit? Um, <laughs> I mean, let me let me roll back because I will I will just for context for maybe people that don't know this was a segment where there was Chucky and it was bright bright of Chucky I believe it was mm-hmm. you're right uh, and and I think he was having a verbal confrontation with Rick Steiner that that explains the chains yes yes. <laughs> So, again, was it disappointment that it's a Chucky or disappointment that it's just was just complete crap TV at the time? Well, I'm still at the age where I thought it was real. And, you know, he's like, OK, well, even with Chucky. Yeah, even with Chucky. Okay. Like, that doll's alive. I thought it was just a toy. What does that mean about the world of Toy Story? Is Chucky killing toys in Toy Story? That's that's another drunken conversation we can have later. OK, but um, yeah, no, it's just. He saw immediately that it was not good for me, and okay. it would never lead to anything productive in my life. Uh, and, uh. Yeah, so far, yeah, we haven't determined whether he's right or not. <laughs> we, we, we are still early in the process, <laughs> <Yeah>. aren't we? <laughs> still, but it's just like, this is just bad for everyone involved on this side of the screen and on that side of the screen. No one understands what's going on. I'm going to wean you off of wrestling somehow. Here, play a game of chess or something. You know, pretend to be smart. <laughs> so, so was was it? It was a, a bit of a battle to 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 stay with wrestling. Uh, did you did you separate from it for a little bit? Uh, to be honest, my dad kind of convinced me right then and there that you know, this is dumb and like, you know, now that I learned that dolls won't kill me in my sleep, you know, it's I think you're onto something, Dad. And I put it off for many years as, oh, um, this is just, you know. It's it's soap opera for men, and you know every wrestling fan thinks it's real. Hey, you know, how dare you, wrestling fans, fall for this stuff? You are all so dumb, and I am not as dumb. And uh, I don't know. It's uh, later in life, I caught more dumb things, but they're like dumb in a way that I could appreciate. Mm-hmm. My next real memory of wrestling was uh, sometime. Uh, late 2014, I was in the desert and they had a uh, SmackDown on and it was around Christmas time. And there was this big 10, 20 diva battle royale and they're all wearing, you know, Christmas costumes. Oh. And the finish of the oh, match boy. was they linked arms and they spun in a giant pinwheel to kind of like hurl people out of the ring. And I said, that's dumb as shit. Now I know oh. that they don't think it's real either. Now, now I'm in on the joke. Now I'm going to start paying attention. You know, I started paying attention. Why were you in the desert? You know, killing people. You know, for my country. Okay, well, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you went. <laughs> there was a detail we're missing. Okay, we're, we're, right. we're, we're, we're in a good spot now. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, wow. So the divas brought you back. Like they, any like any red blooded American man, they, they they melted my frozen heart, 
on that Christmas Eve. <laughs> that was yeah. not very frozen in the desert. <laughs> it it gets cold sometimes. Okay, okay, know. that's true. That's true. There, there's some there's some rough nights. I get it. Yeah. Wow. Um, man, dime. Well, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'm topping that. Uh, I'm glad we started with the with the hot story. Yeah. So, Elijah Dean, how, what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Well, you know, I was born into the Attitude Era. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you were you were you were but a, you were, it, you're conceived yeah, in 1998 uh, as a result of a a oh, stone God, cold beer bash, probably. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> as long as I can remember, no, my parents had had wrestling on. Okay. They, they were more in a WCW. So my dad mm. was a huge Goldberg fan. Okay. But when I really started watching, it was probably like 04, 05. That I can remember, you know, just a young kid in kindergarten. <laughs> in 04, 05. Uh, you were the kid that made him want to be cooler by watching wrestling <laughs> yes. I mean, he kindergarten. Was, he wasn't there. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, like, like. In his kindergarten, right. he was the other kid. Oh, okay. And there's another you that he's influencing. <laughs> All right. I'm picking up what you're Dude, putting down. You, you see that? So. Yes. I'm, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Hypothetically. I've caught up. <laughs> yeah, so, proceed. <laughs> so I was real into, you know, just, that's ruthless aggression, and mm-hmm. blood. Mm-hmm. And I see, you know, Eddie Guerrero and JBL getting split open. Oh, and Shawn Michaels really stood out to me at the time. Still does. As a favorite of all time. So, just from then on, been hooked. And there was a period where, you know, I didn't just find out wrestling was, you know, fake. I, Dad told me, I don't know why you're watching this still. It's, it's fake. And it's, you're crushing a kid's spirit at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I'm just like, screw this. I'm done watching wrestling. And that was probably like 08. And then I ventured back into wrestling like 2011 because a guy by the name of CM Punk, mm-hmm. I had turned Ooh. on the TV and he was on the top of the ramp cutting his infamous promo, the pipe bomb, and hooked again. Haven't been unhooked since. So that's interesting. So both of you have, okay, maybe at young ages, mm-hmm. uh, uh, kind of got separated from it and came back around. Mm-hmm. Your, yours wasn't a diva, though. No. No. Well, it's, no, it was a guy with slicked back hair, I guess. I mean, I didn't. All right. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to burn it, I guess. <laughs> I've got more. <laughs> I have more wrestling stories. Um, great. So, so that's how you guys got into it, and, and you kind of got hooked into it. Uh, at what point did you kind of uh, decide that you wanted to actually get in the ring and do this thing? You want to tell your bo- you know boring story first, and then I'll yeah. Let's, let's flip it. Let's flip it. Yeah, let's just see. in case. All right. Um. <laughs> so again, 2011, I see the the pipe bomb promo mm-hmm. and I'm hooked on this whole CM Punk run. And while that's happening, I find some, some guys now close friends, one, which is in the wrestling business, won't mention names, but he, uh, he has a ring in his backyard. He says, let's, yeah, I go to go to watch him. And he says, you know, you want to do it. And, you know, unsafe is all hell. I don't recommend it. Mm-hmm. Get trained if you want to be a wrestler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm like, sure. Getting there, probably, you know, not a real ring. It's more like a pony <laughs> pony ring. It's a nice little little guy. It wasn't a trampoline ring. It no. was it was just a nice little... stiff boards. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I think they had one of those in the battle the the, the big battle royal but, a month ago. You mm. know, I get in there and I'm like Wow, this feels this feels natural to me. It's mm-hmm. just I like this feeling. Mm-hmm. So from there on, I'm like, all right, I need to I need to become a wrestler. Like th- I feel like this is what I was meant to do. I always liked entertaining people, and I have an athletic background, so that goes with that. And I'm just whole high school career. I'm sitting there, just I'm gonna be a wrestler. Hmm. Finally, tell my parents I'm gonna be a wrestler, and they're. They were not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> not that's where my disappointed father comes into play. <laughs> See, we all have disappointed fathers. <laughs> yeah, he's he is not okay with it. But anyways, I'm still just 
no, I'm I'm gonna do this and become a wrestler mm-hmm. because it's what feels right and hasn't let me down yet. Let's hope it doesn't. <laughs> It's a, it's inevitable, but, but anyways, <laughs> I mean, it is pro wrestling. Uh, all right, what about you, Professor? Obviously, you got your education. Uh, ish. No. Um, so Listen, there's so many doctors in wrestling, mm. not as many professors. Okay, it's, at least I'm a little bit different. We have questioned all of their, their, their doctorates uh, on this show. It's, um, I've never even heard of disaster. And physics. you came out with beakers, so I am not questioning your. What's a professor like a PhD or something? Is that uh, how it works? Yes. Uh, well, professor is more of a job title. Are you but a like, scientist? What is? <laughs> I mean, I oh. I pretend to be smart, <laughs> but just no. just, uh, just like scientists. All right. So the thing that told me that I should get into professional wrestling was all right. So. Chucky disappointed me. Okay, the not divas, Chucky. The Back divas, like, they put their hand on their shoulder, like, don't take it so seriously. Like, okay, thank you, divas. And <laughs> then, and then, um, after, uh, like, uh, I don't know how to put it. Uh, I had been betrayed in real life by a friend. And, uh, oh, this person I called my brother, you know, stabbed me in the back. Oh, uh, if only there was some sort of relevant storyline going on at the time. That with who's this Dean Ambrose fella and who's this Seth Rollins prick, and I became a shield mark overnight, and mm. I saw a story that I could relate to, mm-hmm. and I thought, all right, if the divas told me that don't take it too seriously, you know the shield story along told me that I can take it seriously and you know give it the benefit of the doubt and it could be genuinely entertaining and make me want to know more. So basically, wrestling was uh, encoding these special personalized messages to you, yeah. Throughout your your watching career, yeah. It's I've learned so much from wrestling, just so much. I'm not even going to get into the thing about you know child divorce lawyers and winning children from ladder <laughs> matches. That I'm I'm pretty sure they go over that in law school. I'll have to ask Chris later. But <laughs> anyway, you know, I learned that it could be something that you don't have to be ashamed of Mm -hmm. and i thought well i'm you know i'm kind of athletic because the government says i am um (laughs) and the government has no use for me after i get out of the air force so i'll try to you know do something to uh you know express my creativity Mm -hmm. and do something interesting and cool and you know i'll give it a shot i know that i will fail and never succeed but at the very least, I will have that, you know, that uh, special photo in the back of my wallet that says, I tried. I gave it my all. So, you know, and then I succeeded, sort of. And now I don't know what I'm doing. Yes. It's all very yes. frightening. And making history in the first ever Tiki death match. We'll get to that in a, in a oh little boy. bit. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> so so uh, uh, from there, obviously, both of you guys went to the uh, IWC uh, training school there under uh, Chris LaRusso, mm-hmm. uh, under his tutelage. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so how did you come across uh, the school and, and kind of get involved there? All right. Well, uh, leaving the Air Force and the uh, the ass end of Texas, you know, I don't want to go back to West Virginia. West Virginia sucks. I know what's <laughs> cool. Pittsburgh is cool. They have buildings and they're shiny and they're made of glass and stuff. And I want to. There's none of that in West Virginia. No. Actually, I don't think there is at all, is it? <laughs> no, there's plexiglass. Okay. And, you know, meth labs. But, you know. Hmm. Uh, so I decided to move up to, you know, uh, Pittsburgh. And I thought, you know what? I think I should go to a live show before I commit to this. And uh, Pittsburgh Wrestling, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Wrestling Express. I'll, I'll go there. And I saw a couple shows. And like, yeah. Uh, I'm supporting independent wrestling. You know, I'm seeing these guys before they make it. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ring broke once or twice, but you know, that was part of the fun. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I looked into, uh, their training program and I looked into, uh, IWC and I just gone to, uh, IWC like more recently before, uh, you know, uh, I decided to train and I thought, you know, I really like this product. I really like these wrestlers. I'll give them my money first. 
And uh, after a show, I stalked this guy with big poofy hair and small pants named Andrew Palace. Mm. And I said, sir, I'm really interested. In, yeah, oh, yeah, I know you got your deal with the Andrew guy. Palace. I mean, yeah. It's, he hadn't punched me in the face at that point. Anyway, <laughs> um, I didn't punch you in the face either, I don't think. Maybe he did. Maybe he shut yes. up. It's, listen, I don't know your story. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. And he uh, suggested, like, oh, yeah, send an email to uh, this guy named Justin Plummer. You know, he'll be glad to take your money and promise you fame and, you know, response to that. And uh, I was like, yeah, all right, I like that plan. It sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so far, it's worked out great. Except awesome. for except for the unicorn to the dick thing, but you know that, yeah. <laughs> that'll happen. All right, before we get to your first match, Man Dime, what is your story? How did you get to the uh, IWC training school? All right, so I always went to IWC shows in mm-hmm. high school. Just as an IWC mark, uh, founding fathers really stood out to me. Just cause they were entertaining. And that's the Jimmy Vegas, Dennis Gregory, uh, and Super, Super Hentai. Hentai. I don't know which iterations you were yeah, watching. Yeah, I think that's the one. You know, yeah, but I know Justin Idol, uh, was, Bubba the Bulldog, at some points there. And at so. the time, uh, Jimmy Nuts was on top of his game. Jimmy Nuts, yeah. man. So, and, man, I miss Jimmy Nuts. Oh, look and actually, let's go nuts. The way I went to these shows was I went to a youth group. And I am not a religious man at all, <laughs> <laughs> but I hear that they go to wrestling shows. So I'm in there. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I want to back this up because I also went to a youth group when I was younger and I was religious. <laughs> it still am, but, but other than that. You know, uh, Jesus invented the crucifix powerbomb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so, he wait, did. So you heard the youth group goes to wrestling oh, shows. Yeah. <laughs> so you joined the youth group. So you had people to go to wrestling shows with? Yeah. It was like, I live like an hour and a half away. Okay, I don't so have a, a license. Deal. Wait. I'm like, this is a they, way to get there. Did, wait, 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 wait. Did they take the church van? <laughs> did they? They might have. I think they did. <laughs> I just love this idea that there's like a church youth group that's going to like IWC. <laughs> you, if you where, uh, where, geez, I don't know. We had Tommy Dreamer and Rhino just not too long ago <laughs> oh, doing boy. hardcore I was there at that time. You had to have been, right? <laughs> we loved it. Guess who uh, Guess who was in that church van with me? None other than the country hammer, Jamie James. Whoa! <laughs> you know what? No, if I could imagine anybody on the IWC roster in a church van, it's the country hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's... I guarantee you could pull up old photos of me and a... Me and a young, pudgy Jamie Jameson in, <laughs> in the crowd at IWC shows. And I just... I'd go there, and I was like, I wonder if they, you know, have a wrestling school. Mm-hmm. So our pastor, he knew Jimmy Nuts, <laughs> so we'd talk to him. I don't know how this comes together. <laughs> yeah, we we talked to him, and for some reason, he's telling us that school's closing down. But I'm still too young at this time, like, to even, I wasn't graduating for another few years. Yeah. So, And I think at the time, there was probably, like, they were tra- switching trainers or something. Yeah. People were leaving, coming and going. So so Jamie Jameson goes to OVW, and then he comes back he back home mm-hmm. and starts training at IWC. And I'm like, well, I'm not moving to Kentucky or New Jersey just to train for wrestling. So I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, I'm going to go to <laughs> IWC. I liked their shows before, and I was recommended because he told me Chris and – Andrew Palace were great trainers and like, all right, I'm going to go to this. Awesome. Awesome. So, so what was your, when you guys got into training, obviously you kind of, I want to say played around in a ring already. So you had a little bit of familiarity there, right? Yeah, I guess. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I think Sean Phoenix called you guys dirty yarders uh, (laughs) already in the chat room. Uh, (laughs) uh, But uh, so what was, what was your expectations going into the training and how did that kind of live up? For you guys, uh, well, in the meantime, between you know becoming a shield mark and yeah. deciding I get yeah. you know into wrestling, I decided to you know become yeah, what do you call it uh, a smarter mark. You know, uh, a really oh, you're smart- one of those guys. Yeah, I I was and am and am and I am. I'm still am. 
Anyway, uh, I decided I'm going to become as knowledgeable as possible. So I'm going to start listening to podcasts. Oh. And, uh, yeah, Art of Wrestling, Jericho. What, uh, what did we do before podcasts for you guys to learn about the wrestling business? It's, uh, I don't know, get laid maybe. But yeah. mm, I don't yeah. think you know anything about that. Hey, man, it's... Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, uh, where was I? Yeah, and, you know, many times they brought up their origins in wrestling, and, you know, oh, man, you know, hitting the, you know, taking a bump for the first time, you know, killed me, and hitting the ropes for the first time, you know, nearly broke my back. So, yeah, getting to the ring for the first time, I'm anticipating all of this, you know, this is going to break me in half, you know, just doing a, you know, a simple flat back bump, and, uh, I'm never going to recover, but at the very least, I will have tried, and I'll have that nice little photo in my wallet, and, you know, like, oh, at the very least, I took a bump, so I'm the smartest of these smart guys in this chat room, and, uh, you know, you know, I could live disappointed, but not as disappointed, and then I took a bump, and, like, I'm still in one piece, mm -hmm. and then I tried running the ropes, and that was a disaster, but I didn't get broken in half, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, and, you know, I had, you know, my first check, and I didn't disappoint uh, Chris LaRusso to the point of crying, and I thought, I'm on my way. <laughs> you know, let's see what happens. Ah, so so attainable goals uh, yeah. I had to move up. That's good. Yeah. What about, what about you? Um, you know, I'm, I'm the dime, so obviously it's, mm -hmm. I know it's not going to be too hard, but, I mean, I do sweat like everyone else. I'm human. Okay. But, um, okay. So, originally, I tried I tried out a year before. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was a senior in high school. And it'd be too difficult to get back and forth. So, the tryout went well and all that. But I had a state championship to win in football. It was, my, it was a commitment before wrestling. So, I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, let me finish this out senior year in high school. And then I'll go go back for another go we had a championship to win in football <laughs> look at me i'm athletic <laughs> so i knew it'd be tough i didn't know the cardio would be that serious mm -hmm. so first time in the ring with uh, what did you play in fo uh, football by the way uh linebacker linebacker inside so mm -hmm. not quite as much wrestling uh, yeah. uh, uh, running i'm sorry no yeah uh and so i get in the ring with you know the gentleman i had trained with mm-hmm and I believe our first class altogether, uh, Sir LaRusso wasn't there. He wasn't in attendance. Hmm. It was, hmm. uh, it was a man by the name of Andrew Palace. Yeah, that guy Screw with that curly guy. hair. Um, God, his hair is curly. And he's the devil when it comes to cardio. I'm pretty sure Satan himself doesn't even do that to you. <laughs> but there's these things called grape squishers. And you put your arms in the corner, you start chugging them legs. I've never heard of this. Oh, my God. Ugh. Ask any wrestler. They're going to have the same response. Ah. And a minute, a minute 30 will have you winded. Mm -hmm. We got four minutes straight. So, yeah, I remember he looked at all of us. He said, so does anybody want to quit? I'll pay your tryout fee if you want to quit today. Nobody quit that day. So, knew it was going to be hard, but... Toughed it out and stuck with it. That's. I remember that day. Yeah. Yeah. That and day. Uh, you know, he asked us, uh, you know, you know, what are your intentions, you know, for wrestling? And you know, I'm gonna be champion. Wait, 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 we wait, wait, wait. Like, like, like a father will ask about uh, the daughter you're taking out. <laughs> yes. What are your intentions? Yeah. What are your intentions? As, as we're in a circle holding a plank. Mm -hmm. After four <laughs> minutes of grapes questions. Yes. <laughs> Wait, there's a plank involved? <laughs> like, you know what a plank is? Like, yeah. Yeah, so he's a, he's a after the grape squishers, we're in a plank. Oh, wait, wait. wait the, the physical move. Yes. A plank. Yes. A plank. Okay. We are all for your for I'm your just core. picturing you passing a plank to speak for some reason. <laughs> I, yes. I'm sorry. I, this is our just... trust circle. You must have the talking plank yes. in order to share your feelings. <laughs> no, we were all doing planks in the middle of the ring to train our abs. When he asked us about, you know... What do you want out of all of this? And, you know, Dime said, I'm going to be the champion. And, you know, uh, Johnny Patch said, I'm going to jump off stuff and be champion. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Judo Kid says, 
I'm going to throw people into stuff and then be champion. <laughs> and I just said, I don't want my dad to be disappointed anymore. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try not to disappoint anyone else. Which I'm pretty sure is like the least committed answer, but it was the truth at the time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So you guys survived it. Proving Ground 7. Uh, you guys can go check it out. It's over on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, for Randall, if you want to check out what these guys are doing, a little bit of previews on there as well. I'm going to have to try to get uh, some more clips of you guys up as well from that mm -hmm. show so people can at least get a little tidbit mm -hmm. uh, of what all the new guys are about. Uh, but it, it, but so you got your first show. Let's uh, uh, well first I, first one on the card I saw come out was the Man Dime. Now mm -hmm. the Man Dime, we've seen. Yep. You've been coming out lately with uh, uh, Katie Arquette Has and, and Calvin. <laughs> Couture, Couture. I'm trying to say the T right. I know I do it wrong. I just, it's impossible for me to do. do you, well, first of all, do you pronounce the T right? Couture. 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 Is there like a training session he puts you through on that? No, it's no. just you either got it or you it don't. Just, I don't. I don't. It's it's <laughs> that, and I can't roll my R's. And, it would, yeah, so. Um, I don't think you have to roll any R's in Couture, but. No, 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 no. But that's the other thing. I, oh, never mind. <laughs> um, so. Tell me about, like, first of all, you, so you got a little bit of a, a, at least exposure being out there yep. uh, in front of fans, right? Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, I wasn't too nervous mm -hmm. going into the match just because, like, the first time I went out there with Katie, I was like, all right, here's the butterflies. And I got through it just fine. And mm -hmm. I'm like, all right. So even before the match, they're like, you got it? You good? You know? You nervous? I'm like, not really, actually, <laughs> for mm. some reason. So, that was all good. This past weekend, as at an event, though, <laughs> wrestled some guy named Johnny Patch. Uh, some jack. <laughs> I was more nervous for that one. I don't know. Maybe in much smaller crowd, but yeah. maybe because it's new environment, mm -hmm. and that's why. But is it a little bit because you? Know, I know you know. Uh, if you look at the card, like you guys are really paired with some of the veterans. Yeah, uh, in there, um, and, and you drew Andrew Palace. Of course, of course, of course, you did. Um, is it a little different because like there isn't that vet that you're up against? It's like you're there with another another newbie to that point. Yeah, this might be that, but I think it was just you know a lot of new faces there mm -hmm. and just different promoter, and you're trying to impress different people, and it's like yeah. all right, yeah, this is nerve wracking now, but got through it there, so mm -hmm. I'm in this for the long haul. Um, tell, tell, tell me about Mandime as the persona. Like, where did that come from? Uh, you know, is there any, any kind of backstory on that? Oh, you're looking at him. That's it. <laughs> That's, I look in the mirror and I say Mandime. I look in the mirror. I wake up in the morning. I piss excellence. I piss excellence. I piss excellence. I send my 100 plus text messages to all the females that adore me and let them know how lucky they are to be talking to me. Okay. He has not stopped being the man dime for the past 13 months. <laughs> not a second goes by without this guy diming it up. Diming it up. Yeah. It's just yeah. me turned up a few notches. <laughs> a few notches. It's, uh, oh, shoot. Oh, you're running late. Hey, Elijah, what time is it? It's dime time. Be helpful, please. I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, funny story. So I have a nice collection of watches and okay, you're a watch guy. Okay. <laughs> every, that's pretty nice yeah, over there. Every, every, that's not, that's not an Apple watch. Like that thing is shiny. Yeah, we, we may, we were at the, uh, the rise event, you know, the all female rise yeah. event and professor over here looks at me and he says, Hey dime, what, what time is it? It's like, I don't, I don't know. I did. I don't keep time on these things. These are just for show. <laughs> I don't wind these. As far as I'm concerned, every clock reads dime time, but uh, that's just that's just me. And just like that, the best catchphrase in the whole world <laughs> sprouted wings and took off that day. Holy and shit. we're all better because of it. Aren't have we? you done a promo yet to uh, unveil this on the world? I have. Uh, I haven't even unveiled the Dean's list yet, but oh no, that's just a matter of time. <laughs> I okay, okay, some things to look forward to. Uh, so, how you feeling up after that first match? I felt good. Uh, you know, the reason I lost is because 
Palace almost hit Katie. But let's be honest here. He almost took her head off, and I was – mine completely left the match. I was I was worried about the queen, mm-hmm. and he just got the best of me. Mm-hmm. But it happens. You know, he, he beat Wardlow. It's not like he's not an accomplished man. He's he's on top of his game. Uh, so – how, how is it, but, you know, again, you're, you're coming out with Katie, and she was in your corner for that um, while not getting the win the first time out there. How, how is that to, to have somebody that also, you know, another, uh, I would say more recent, I think she's a, the last class from a couple years ago, yep. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, how is that in, in kind of supporting you and you're kind of uh, uh, getting out there for the first few uh, times? She's definitely very helpful, you know. It's mm. just very encouraging and a lot of tips, you know, stay calm, mm-hmm. go slow. And I couldn't speak more highly about her. She's she's really great. And what what? No, it's uh Boo Boo Bear says I'm great. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, just listen to all these compliments roll off his tongue. La, 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 la. Oh, shouldn't you be studying about chest flexor over there? Um. So, <laughs> uh yeah, she's very helpful and couldn't speak highly enough about her. I, you know, if, if Calvin would have been there, I might have got the win. But there you go. There you go. who knows what he was doing that day, like touring exotic islands. Yeah. Well, Professor, you drew chess flexor. Yes. You had a title match, your first outing. Yes, I did. So that's, I mean, you you have that mark for the for the, and also, as I mentioned, the first ever tiki death match. The first ever tiki death match. Yes. And Butch, the rules were the only way to win was to throw your opponent over the top rope and both feet hit the floor. Right. Kind of a deceptive name, huh? It's... Sure. Yeah. No, it's... Now, I had studied the history of the High Stakes Championship, Mm -hmm. and a lot of violence happens between those ropes. Yes. So I was studying all sorts of different death matches. Uh, Landmine explosion death matches... uh, Whoever eats the most glass wins death matches. Seems right. The, the, yeah, the, the mid-2000s yeah. were pretty rough Just at IWC. All, all sorts of things like that. And I had every countermeasure you know, prepared except for what I believe might be the very first two-man over-the-top battle royale. Tiki death match. Tiki death match. On paper, it's a tiki death match. It's in the back of my skull. It's a tiki death match. In my nightmares, it's a tiki death match. I keep hearing the words tiki death match because people keep saying to me, tiki death match. I haven't forgotten. I'm just trying to be technical. Mm-hmm. You know, in layman's terms, you know, if they hadn't been bombarded with the words tiki death match in their sleep over and over again, they would call that a two person over the top battle royale. Isn't now that we've got that royal. Settled, are you done? Are you done being unhelpful? I know the answer to that. It's no. You'll never be done being unhelpful. Where was I? I've lost track. Tiki death match. Tiki death. De- mm, that words again. <laughs> right. So, I I figured, you know, I had the upper hand. It's I uh, I weigh a little bit more than chest flexor. Mm-hmm. You know, I measured him. It's don't ask me how. Uh, but I figured out, you know. These are things I should know. I'm heavier than him. That'll give me the advantage. And maybe I took that for granted. Maybe I didn't take into account how slippery he was because he's oddly slippery. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I even wore special gloves for the occasion to give me more of a grip. But it didn't help, apparently. Every time I got to him, he evaded my grasp somehow. And, oh my gosh. Just at the last second, you know, when I unveiled my my ace up my sleeve or should I say the referee's pocket you know a vile venom of the most caustic things I could find in my laboratory laboratory don't correct me um you know he turned the tables he struck me in the throat you know I swallowed it I am not that guy from the princess bride where I've become immune to every poison in the world or or, or Tommy Dreamer or, or Tommy Dreamer I imagine he takes in a lot of poison it's, I'm going to have to ask him about that someday. Is he immune to poison? I don't know, but he's eaten at least two hot dogs off of the floor after um, a Dylan Bostic match. That sounds like the same thing. Yeah. yeah. That's similar. But, you know, I had to vacate the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everything's on the tape. You know, I tried to make an opportunity of that setback. And uh, 
apparently some unicorn named Winthrop found its name into the ring. He used it against me, you know, twice in succession. And wildly out of control, he flung me to the corner. The momentum took me over the top rope, and he did a crane kick out of the Karate Kid movies, which... <laughs> Should have studied Karate Kid. I'm pretty sure that was illegal in the tournament. It, that was illegal in the tournament, but not in a Tiki death match. God, I hate those words. Johnny was the hero. Um, so, so guys, so the professor, like how, um, um, how did the professor come about? And, and, and now I've heard, you know, as the, as you know, before the, before the, the, uh, the, the, the shows over the last several months, I just hear Chris Russo yell professor and, and bark commands. Right. Um, and I'm just like, what is happening there? And it was kind of interesting to finally see what he's talking about. Well, when I'm not busy doing squats and lifting up heavy things in the gymnasium, uh, I'm pursuing an engineering degree. And I thought, uh, this engineering degree is perfect for me because I ask a lot of questions. There's a lot of math involved. And, you know, in physics and such, everything needs to go just right. You need this vector to be right. You need this angle to be right. You know, if you don't take into account this, you know, this thing over here, you know, Things could go poorly, let's say. And uh, so near the beginning of training, you know, uh, Chris or Palace would tell me a very simple command. Okay, uh, hurl this jag off over here. All right, now when I hurl this jag off, uh, at what point do I apply, you know, the most amount of force? Because the center of gravity is down here. Just, just throw the guy. All right. And... I always asked way too many questions. I always overthought things to the point where it's just stop being a professor and just, you know, do something. And, uh, yeah, the nickname stuck. And, uh, yeah, I got to the point where, uh, you know, that's, that's really who I am. A guy who overthinks things, a guy who talks too much, a guy who asks too many questions, or a guy who doesn't ask the right questions at the right particular time, mm -hmm. and things just kind of go haywire. And, uh, yeah, I have a love of science. Science loves me back for the most part. And uh, it does. does it? You don't know, but, you know, things between me and science. Your, your method failed you. Don't, don't bring up the violentific method. Not yet. Not yet. Where was I? I've forgotten. Right. So, I... Again, uh, like coin purse here, uh, I'm <laughs> just, coin purse. I'm just, I've always been the professor <laughs> and it just kind of comes out in the wrestling ring. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just started thinking about all the chance that you had your first match. For <laughs> what, what were they chanting? Penny dime? Man or penny, penny. Man penny. A lot of room to talk from those fans. <laughs> a lot of room. <laughs> wow. It's, There's a lot of math happening on commentary, too. Oh, I think yeah, in both I, your matches. I've heard the commentary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you've had your first match in, uh, of course, and uh, we'll, you know, we like to try to follow up on you guys after a year or six months or however the case may be here, mm -hmm. here on the show. Um so, uh, first of all, you know, you guys are new. You guys kind of look for influences. What kind of has your attention these days in wrestling? Anybody out there you're looking to uh, for inspiration? Either either uh, promotion shows or, or wrestlers themselves or even anybody that you're seeing on the indies that kind of sticks out to you? Hmm. Well, as far as independent promotions, uh, you know, I've been called a monster all my life, so I think I'd be a perfect fit for the Monster Factory. Uh, so, you know, looking forward to going to that sometime down in the future. Uh, as far as um, promotions and such that I want to break into, uh, uh, it's no one invites me anywhere, and it's just in wrestling and in life. So I just I just show up to places and maybe they'll take me. Mm -hmm. So I'll just roam around and you know find people that have me. As far as uh, independent influences, uh, honestly, every single one of them, uh, every single. Uh, uh, independent worker that I've met has just given me such great advice, whether it's, you know, uh, technical stuff in the ring, you know, mm -hmm. slow down here, speed up here, try this, try that. Every single person has a great idea that I can apply to my character. You know, Oh, what if this happens or what if that happens or 
what happens if your potion is blue this week and next time you take a yellow potion and so it's you know there's everyone has just it, it's so much advice that I'm never going to get through all of it which I'm lucky to you know have that privilege where you know people you know want to offer me so much stuff and uh, as lame as it sounds I look up to everyone except for Mandyne what about so you negative. Elijah was, Dean. was the question where do we want to work in the future? <laughs> no, no. <Or> was it, <laughs> did I answer the question? What are you what are you influenced by? Well, like, what am I watching nowadays? Promotions, what are you watching? How are you right, want to uh, take okay, it? Okay, well, that's not <laughs> what's got your attention these days. <laughs> um, apparently not the interviewer. <laughs> I mean, I still watch WWE from time to time. It's mm-hmm. just it's hard to keep my attention for 3 hours when I have so many females trying to get a hold of me, but <laughs> I I still keep keep tabs on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, mm. um, AJ Styles always, always like watching him. Mm-hmm. Seeing that what's going on with that. Uh, like a, Shawn Michaels was my favorite growing up, all time favorite. So I'm real interested to see if he still has it coming up here. Mm. You'll be uh, getting your cornflakes on Saturday morning and watching that show. <laughs> Pro- probably. Right. Yeah. If I'm Is not it gonna doing be dime live? things in the morning? <laughs> it's gonna be live. Yeah, it's gonna be live, at like starting at five a.m. local time. Oh, oh wow. yeah, probably here in not. Pittsburgh. Probably yeah, sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, by the time you roll out at like you know eight or nine a.m. on a Saturday, it'll probably be time for the. Yeah. As far as the indies, I'm just I'm always watching stuff on YouTube, whatever crosses, mm-hmm. whenever I'm surfing. Uh, big thing is I like watching uh, top moves. I don't know if anybody ever searches that, yeah. but. Yeah. You always find different things to use on there. Oh, like like, like the top like yeah, ten moves top, of. I watch like top eighty yeah, from people yeah. and just top thirty nine um, moves. Yeah, you always of find just Tetsuya Naito. Yeah. That's just every move he knows. They, <laughs> or why are they all his top moves? It's just he he knows all those moves and they're all really great. And I agree, Tetsuya Naito's great. This is my way of answering the question that you actually asked me, but I misheard. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, New Japan Mark uh, L I J. Love those guys being the elite. They're hilarious to me. Uh, so, yeah, everything New Japan is what I've been paying attention to. And now I'm done. <laughs> All right. Uh, Did you have more to yours before you actually, interrupted? Actually, um, going to be here at IWC Saturday. MJF, I've always yeah always followed him. No, he has a he has some dime quality. So, always keep an eye on someone like that. It's not quite the dime, but he's. He's, he's all right. He's an all right, dude. Uh, he's not quite the dime. He, he's maybe a nickel. Maybe a nickel and four pennies. How many uh, how many jokes about coins can you, do you think I can get into this conversation? <laughs> I'm not doubting your ability, Professor. I have many. <laughs> a lot of math. A lot of math amongst these guys. All right. So uh, what's the... Usually ask what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling. What's the best and worst thing about training to be an indie wrestler so far? Worst thing by far is grape squishers. <laughs> I think it's across or the, the board, drill. right? The bag drill is tough too. Yeah, bag drill. Uh, drop down, mm-hmm. get up, drop down, hit the rope. Bag you just drill. do that. For Those like are grass minute. drills back in my day. Uh, it's yeah, just they're both performance center drills. Yeah. They suck, but they're useful. Uh, best thing probably just probably the bond you make with people, friendships you can take out of it. Worst things first, uh, you know, I, I pretend to be a smart guy. Uh, although, as you can say, my attention wavers sometimes. And I kind of forget what I'm doing halfway between stuff, which leads to interesting results. So drills can be, like, more mentally taxing to me than physically. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm a physical specimen, but yeah, I know I'm, I'm going to get blown up anyway. It's the things I don't take into account. Like, how hard is it to remember, uh, you know, uh, shoulder tackle, uh, hit the ropes, drop down, yada, 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 yada. Oh, it's, I've seen people do this a million times. Wait, that, uh, that last step evaded me. What am I supposed to do now? It, was it get punched in the face? What well, is now? Now my job is to get punched in the face. It was supposed to be, uh, you know, duck a punch in the face, but then it became get punched in the face. Hmm. So that, you know, life happening really fast in the ring is very difficult. Um, yeah, but, unexpectedly you know making friends finding people with similar interests and similar senses of humor uh 
honestly, it's I never leave my front door expecting to make friends or have people, you know, enjoy my company. So I'm always surprised when people say like, yeah, come over here, professor. You know, you're not that annoying right now. Like, oh, wow. Ah, <laughs> friendship. They should make a cartoon show with horses about this concept. <laughs> hmm. Excellent. Uh, so tell everybody uh, where you guys you get you got your social media lined up. You got everything reserved, right? Let me, let me, it's common across the board. You got this. Yeah, let me take a look. So the, at the, is there a social media class when you're getting trained here at, uh, at the IWC school? I was no? already ahead of the game. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, uh, yeah. Instagram. If you want to follow Old Man Dime, which right. I recommend it. Uh, I the, think Old Man Dime should not be a phrase you use often. No, that seems that starts to get creepy. <laughs> that that's. That's my dad. Papa Mandime would be Papa Mandime. I like old, Papa Mandime. Old Mandime. That's that'd be my okay. dad. Sorry. Mm. Uh, Instagram though would be the underscore Mandime with two e's at the end, not just one, two. Dime me, dime. It's just dime. You know. They're just, both silent. Yeah. Okay. And then on the the Twitter, uh, the Mandime ninety eight, ninety eight is the year I was born. So. There you go. That's two numbers in a row. Nine and eight. Don't don't look up my Facebook, you creeps. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Professor? Uh, I managed to somehow find the same combinations of words in a row. Ooh. <clears throat> it, one might have some underscores, but you know. Okay. Don't. All right. Yeah. On the Twitter, at die Ryan die, spelled like my last name, D Y E Ryan D Y E, and on the Instagram. It's at die, D-Y-E, underscore Ryan, underscore die. So, die, Ryan, die. It seems catchy. The more people say my last name, the more confidence I gain, mm -hmm. which was the purpose. That's my social media plugs. Please. There you go. And, of course, check these guys out at the upcoming shows for IWC Wrestling. And, of course, um, Generally, do you know, because uh, depending on when this is released, but do you know any promotions generally you're going to end up in other than IWC in the near future? Mm. And it's still on the... Wherever will take me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this, the, the, the journeymen, bookers, mm. give them a try. Uh, wherever you may be, if you're looking for some new blood. Uh, but both these guys had a really good look there. And again, you can see those and uh, samples of those will be coming up soon. Over at IWC, or I'm sorry, at IndieWrestling.us. IWC Proving Ground 7. And keep an eye, at least a, a couple of these guys should be popping up here on IWC's Unbreakable as well. That uh, may have happened or may have already happened by the time you hear this, depending. But uh, go, go check those out and uh, see these. It's always fun to f uh, follow these guys from you know their beginnings and see where they get to. Uh, in the next couple of years here. So thanks thanks so much to you guys. Uh, of course, the professor, thank Ryan Dye, joining us. Thank you. And the man dime, Elijah Dean. You didn't even tell us about the Dean's List yet. Oh, you have to wait and see. Oh, oh Teaser for you guys. Thank you so much. And like I said, check everything out and support Indie Wrestling over at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of great stuff going on over there, including the Indie Wrestling Network, as well as uh, uh, releases from IWC, RWA, Rise Wrestling with a Y, and, of course, our friends over at Premier Wrestling, Waterweight Wrestling uh, up in Cleveland. And... Uh, more coming, I can say, uh, over there. And, of course, you got all the other great podcasts talking about all aspects of pro wrestling at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and find all of this stuff, including the Indie Mayhem Show, on your favorite podcast player. Uh, and if it's not there, let us know at that good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're going to make sure it gets listed for you, too. And please rate and share and definitely hit your local uh, independent promotion and get these guys booked over there. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks to our guests. Uh, until next time, please support and be wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.